In the autumn of 1899, Marconi's first demonstration in the United States took place. Marconi had sailed to the U.S. at the invitation of the New York Herald newspaper to cover the America's Cup international yacht races off Sandy Hook, New Jersey. The transmission was done aboard the SS Ponce, a passenger ship of the Puerto Rico line. Marconi left for England on November 8, 1899 on the American line's SS St. Paul, and he and his assistants installed wireless equipment aboard during the voyage. Prior to this voyage, the Second Boer War had begun, and Marconi's wireless would bring news of the conflict to passengers at the request of some of the officials of the American line. On November 15, the SS St. Paul became the first ocean liner to report her imminent return to Great Britain by wireless when Marconi's Royal Needles Hotel radio station contacted her 66 miles off the English coast. The first Transatlantic Times, a newspaper containing wireless transmission news from the Needles station at the Isle of Wight, was published on board the SS St. Paul prior to its arrival. At the turn of the 20th century, Marconi began investigating a means to signal across the Atlantic to compete with the transatlantic telegraph cables. Marconi established a wireless transmitting station at Marconi House, Rossler Strand, County Wexford, in 1901 to act as a link between Paul Dew in Cornwall, England, and Clifton in Cunamara, County Galway, Ireland. He soon made the announcement that the passage was received at Signal Hill in St. John's, Newfoundland, now part of Canada, on December 12, 1901, using a 500-foot or 150-meter kite-supported antenna for reception signals transmitted by the company's new high-power station at Poldew, Cornwall. The distance between the two points was about 2,200 miles, or 3,500 kilometers. It was heralded as a great scientific advance, yet there also was, and continues to be, considerable skepticism about this claim. The exact wavelength used is not known, but it is fairly reliably determined to have been in the neighborhood of 350 meters, or a frequency of about 850 kilohertz. The test took place at a time of day during which the entire transatlantic path was in daylight. It is now known although Marconi did not know then, that this was the worst possible choice. At this medium wavelength, long-distance transmission in the daytime is not possible because of heavy absorption of the sky wave in the ionosphere. It was not a blind test. Marconi knew in advance to listen for a repetitive signal of three clicks, signifying the Morse code letter S. The clicks were reported to have been heard faintly and sporadically. There was no independent confirmation of the reported reception, and the transmissions were difficult to distinguish from atmospheric noise. A detailed technical review of Marconi's early transatlantic work appears in John S. Belrose's work of 1995. The Poldew transmitter was a two-stage circuit. Feeling challenged by skeptics, Marconi prepared a better organized and documented test. In February 1902, the SS Philadelphia sailed west from Great Britain with Marconi aboard, carefully recording signals sent daily from the Poldu station. The test results produced coherer tape reception up to 1,550 miles or 2,490 kilometers and audio reception up to 2,100 miles or 3,400 kilometers. The maximum distances were achieved at night and these tests were the first to show that radio signals for medium wave and long wave transmissions travel much faster at night than in the day. During the daytime, signals had been received up to only about 700 miles, or 1,100 kilometers, less than half of the distance claimed earlier at Newfoundland, where the transmissions had also taken place during the day. Because of this, Marconi had not fully confirmed the Newfoundland claims, although he did prove that radio signals could be sent for hundreds of kilometers, despite some scientists' beliefs that they were limited essentially to line-of-sight distances. On December 17, 1902, a transmission from the Marconi station in Glace Bay, Nova Scotia, Canada, became the world's first radio message to cross the Atlantic from North America. In 1901, Marconi built a station near South Wellfleet, Massachusetts, 
that sent a message of greetings on January 18, 1903 from the United States President Theodore Roosevelt to King Edward VII of the United Kingdom. However, consistent transatlantic signaling was difficult to establish. Marconi began to build high-powered stations on both sides of the Atlantic to communicate with ships at sea, in competition with other inventors. In 1904, he established a commercial service to transmit nightly news summaries to subscribing ships, which could incorporate them into their onboard newspapers. A regular transatlantic radio telegraph service was finally begun on October 17, 1907, between Clifton, Ireland and Glace Bay. But even after this, the company struggled for many years to provide reliable communication to others.